Hello and welcome to another in our lectures on applied regression analysis. Today we're going to actually perform a full regression analysis of one of our data sets. This is the Forbes atmospheric pressure boiling point data. We've seen this a number of times and now we'll actually perform statistical tests relative to these and we will do some prediction on it and compare a couple of models. We're going to use Jump for our software today. In another video, we may look at these using R. So the Forbes data come to us from a text file, and they're easy enough to load into a Jump data set. Very easy to do a uh, linear model in Jump. In a, if we're in our uh, display editor here, we can simply say we want to model pressure as a function of boiling point, and there we have the scatter plot that we're familiar with and we can simply add a fit of the line. That gives us the line here. Now what else it shows us is we do have our estimate of R squared and we do have the analysis of variance test and we have the univariate test. In particular the test for the significance of the slope is this term right here with a T ratio of 51.74. Obviously it's very significant and that's clear from looking at the data. We have something that looks very much like a linear trend. And we can also save the predicted values to our worksheet, and they just appear there. So we want to also build confidence regions around that. And this point right here that looks like it may be an outlier, let's investigate that one a little bit more while we're at it. We can also take a look at our residual plots. Once we do our residual plots, we can see a lot more information about those residuals. In particular, here's our residuals versus the predicted values. And the residuals themselves. And once again, we see that the data point looks rather significant there. We're just going to look at the data without the line. And this down here is our QQ plot. So it looks like the data have rather a skewed distribution because of that one outlier point that we're familiar with. We can also get predicted either the mean confidence interval, which is how close do we think the line is to what we actually see here. Where do we see the, the hyperbola around the line that is the average values, and also the individual confidence limits. So it's out of scope to talk about the details of the differences between those, but for this exercise, we want to look at the confidence interval around the individual. We get a lower and upper prediction interval for individual observations. In particular, we can see that with this line, the line that includes our potential outlier has a uh, predicted value between 25 and 26, and the actual value that we got is about 26.6, and we would expect 95% confidence interval, even including that observation within the model, to be between 25.4 and 26.4. It seems to be a good indication that we may have an issue with that observation. But that's not the only thing going on with these data. If we look at the residuals, we might believe that this curvilinearity that we see in the residuals is significant, and we want to work with that as well. So. In particular, the physicist that is studying this may recognize the model should actually be log instead of line. So to create the log of pressure rather than linear pressure, we're going to add a new column. And this will be the log of pressure. And this will, will be a formula column. And we can edit our formula here. It's just the log of pressure. And now we can take these two fields here and fit those with a separate fit. Our y variable, our response variable, is now the log of pressure against the boiling point of water and we fit that. Let's go ahead and just put it right next to the other one. And do like we did with the previous analysis we wish to fit a line. And we can see this one also has a very high R squared, of course. It does look like maybe that line is a little bit closer, but as we look at the residuals, we'll see that's even more the case. Now, we really can't directly compare these. Uh, 
we certainly can see that the T ratio of that slope is now 55.42, or the F is 2961 as opposed to 2677. So yes, it's maybe a little bit more significant, but we don't know how to do a statistical test directly comparing them. So looks like is not the same thing as a statistical test. However, this model is not any more complex at some level. You have a simple fit of boiling point against, in this case, the log of pressure versus actual pressure. And once again, we can look at the plot of the residuals and bringing it down to just the same or comparable plot. We see, once again, we don't have that curve of linearity, but as a result, now that outlier looks even more extreme. It really makes these uh, residuals look very, very skewed because of that one, one point that's way above there. And the reason for that is because now the standard error at, for the, uh, the, the measurement of variance around the line has gotten so much tighter because you don't have that additional variance of the points around the line. Once again, we can save the predicted values into our spreadsheet. And now we see these are the predicted of the log values. And we can also fit the save the individual confidence limits. Now the problem is these are on the wrong scale. Our original data were measured in inches of mercury. And these are log inches in some sense. So what is the actual predicted value for atmospheric pressure at these points, well, we need another computed value. Once again, we add a column here that is the predicted pressure from our log model. And here, our formula is going to be e to the predicted value. Similarly, we could make a, another uh, column for the lower and upper regions as well. But let's instead just take a look at the predicted values here. So here is our questionable observation. With the log model, the best fit of that line is 25.75. The best fit from the line, if you don't consider that, is 25.92. Again, very similar for our 26.57. But it does make us wonder, did the scientist mean to have 25.6 instead of 26.6 or maybe transpose them maybe it's supposed to be you know 25.6 instead of 26.5 or whatever it's it's an interesting question we don't have the original data here we don't have the researcher here anymore to ask but it's it's a, a good question for him maybe we want to go to his logs and find out where he did that uh, observation but at any rate uh, we can see that we have improved our model in some sense now, how are we going to keep these data around, these results around? In Jump, we can actually save these. We want to present these in some sort of a report. We can simply copy and paste them into a Word document, for example. Now, we probably don't actually want all of these data, just sit, all, all these results, rather, just sitting there naked in our Word file. These are probably best set into an appendix where you have supplemental data and still have some sort of a narrative about the analysis that you've done. So do your narrative here, and you could copy individual pieces up into your narrative, or say refer to the appendix when you're talking about, for example, the R squared being a particular value or the F statistic being a particular value, instead of just the raw output here and ask the reader to really infer from it. You really want to guide the reader and present a narrative to your analysis. Now that's not the only thing that uh, you have to be careful with and jump. You have to provide that narrative yourself. The other is, what did we do? We have no record, an easy record rather, of the provenance of our analysis. So we would like some sort of a log file. And there's many different ways in which you might do that with the organization that you happen to be working at. So you could just make yourself a set of notes and say, you know, what you did in jump. So maybe a numeric list of the recipe, you know, load data into jump fit pressure versus uh, boiling point, observe residuals, compute log of pressure, etc. 
make yourself a log of your analysis and save that to go with it, just to give yourself some idea of what you did. In this particular case, it's relatively straightforward. However, let's take a look at our data once more. If we wish to analyze these data again, we can actually hide and exclude that observation from this. Now I can do this analysis once more. Let's do the log analysis. So the log of pressure against the boiling point, and now it's going to exclude that observation. And we see that our problematic point is not there anymore. We add the fit of the line, and we see that our R squared is much, much bigger than it was before. F ratio is enormous compared to where it was before. Let's take a look at the plot of our residuals. And there's several of these here, of course, we could look at. But let's, for the purpose of comparison, take a look once again. Notice it does indicate where that excluded observation was there in the raw plot, but this is probably a better way of, of looking at that. So, and now we see that our QQ plot, everything looks to be very nice and reasonably normally distributed. Again, these residuals, there's no particular outliers that we can see here. So we have taken care of that. Now that throwing away data is not necessarily what we do blindly in our statistical analysis. Having an outlier or a suspected outlier doesn't necessarily mean that we simply remove it from the analysis and move on, but rather it may mean that that observation is worth special attention. If we don't have any reason to believe that it's special of its own, we probably should include it in our analysis and account for it accordingly in our analysis. So we need to consider that from more of a methodological perspective. And here especially is where we want to be careful about the provenance of our analysis. And in our log file say, well, notice what happens if we remove that observation, and this is what I did to do that, and here's the analysis that I did as a result of that. Notice it actually did remove that um, point from these other places as well. We have to unhide that point and have it come back. So I'll show you where that was. You can simply choose unhide and it will show you that data point again. So that gives us a good rundown of how to do linear regression in jump and a number of more advanced topics just even with simple linear regression.